so the first question is actually about uh, Das because I was I was assuming I'm talking to Das. Yeah. So Das said in an interview with Tattoo Mag that uh, he considers uh, your music from the outside as a metal fan. So is there anybody outside of the band you um, you chat with if new material is any good or anything, or is it just the band? Yeah, I have a few friends that um, I trust that I send the music to. Uh, but even sometimes even before I send to Des just to get an opinion, but they're I think like literally I can only think of one friend that I do that with, and I, the other people ask. I usually say no. And uh, but yeah, my uh, my roommate's a metalhead. You know, his name's Patrick Kennison. He plays in Lita Ford's band, so you know I'll play. I'll definitely play it for him because he's you know, he's right there. You know, living in the next room next to me, but. Um, yeah, it's usually just within the band. Me, on this last record, it was just me, Neil, and Austin. So I sent that, you know, they always had all the songs on them all the time. Then our producer, Mark, I sent, I, as I, as we were writing, I would send the songs to Mark so he could listen to them. Um, yeah, then we're all happy. That's, usually I, that's when everyone, all four of us hear the music, that's when I send it to Des and go, okay, I'm pretty sure it's done. And um, then he'll start writing lyrics to it. Okay, you said they say no. That means uh, they say it's not good or they say they won't have, a, have an opinion on that? Um, Usually not like a whole song or anything that someone likes, and I think a lot of times if there's, on this record anyway, there wasn't really a whole lot of moments where it was like, now it's no good. I mean, there's definitely moments where it, people say like, well, it's, we can do that better. And a lot of the times when, this is why I work so well with Austin and Neil, and we get along so well, is that we, it's, we kind of read each other's minds, and there were, we didn't get into one single argument on making this record, and I mean, it's definitely the most fun I've ever had doing a record. But a lot of times, I, I'm very indecisive with my writing. Like, how, okay, should I do this, this, or this? Like, I like, do I like this better? And Neil was a big help. It's like, no, that one's better. Or like, dude, you're crazy. It's fine. Just leave it. It doesn't need to be improved anymore. So, so yeah, I need a, a reassurance from someone that I, um, another musical entity that I, I, I trust and I respect. Uh, again, let's let's talk about the new album. It's uh, called Trust No One, mm -hmm. and I have the impression that the lyrics revolve about one huge argument maybe you had. I don't know. Um, it, it seems like each song is revolving about more or less the same thing. So, is is that true or is it just mine? This is one of the theme based around the record, and I don't really. Uh, I try not to talk about. The lyrics. I mean, that's it'd be like Des talking about how I write guitar riffs. You know, it's um, he'd be the best person to ask the question. But as much as I can tell you, the you know, I did an interview with Des yesterday, then or at uh, at Vakken, where some you know was basically the same question, like you know, why I trust no one. And I remember his response to me that it isn't about just one person. It isn't about um, you know previous members of the band, it's more about something else, and I don't even think he would say. So but, it's more of a general thing? Yeah, okay. it is. Okay. It's basically saying, be careful. So I actually have another lyrics question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> so, do you know how, how does writing the lyrics? So is it always about um, just telling stories, or is it influenced by life as, as it happens? Uh, I've, n I've never been there. I mean, I have been there in the past, like on the Fury of Maker's Hand, Last Kind Words, and uh, Beast. No, actually, at Beast I wasn't. But those two records, and I was just new to the band, I was there while Des was writing lyrics because we were all at the same studio, like in there together for two months. But um, this last record, I wasn't around while he was doing it, and but I know he's he's got his own little studio in his house where his vocal booth is and he it's you know he's vibed it out it's very dark and lots of halloween uh decorations 
sheets that he keeps up all year round. And he just likes to lock himself in there and he'll write until like five in the morning. And, uh, you know, to the point where, you know, his wife is upstairs sleeping and he's downstairs sleeping in the studio because he just likes to lock himself away. And I, I'm very much the same. Like when I start writing, and I'm like Des does too, I have to turn my phone off and to make sure my email isn't running anywhere, you know, because I'll, I'll get easily distracted. And I think Des is very much the same way. You know, I need, uh, we both need solitude when we're writing. Okay. Um, did you ever work as a band on a on a song over and over again until you finally th just threw it away and never looked at it again? Yeah, there was a song way back in the day. I think when we were working on, I want to say either "Last Kind Words" or "Pray for Villains," where John Berklin and Jeff Kendrick. We still joke around about this when I talk to them to this day that uh, the two of them had worked out a, a song in. Our rehearsal studio in Santa Barbara and I was two hours south and just south of LA where I was living at, at the time and uh, they're like dude we have this awesome song so we're sitting there and you know they would play one of the riffs and I'd program drums to it and then I'm, he would play another one the next riff and I would program drums to it you know and this is what, how we do the, the demoing process and it's just after a while I was like dude how many riffs do you have in this song and I wasn't really feeling it but you know I was just like okay well, Uh, I'll uh, keep an open mind about it and see what happens and we finished it that day it took all day to do and uh, I gave a CD to John and they were, they were driving back to Santa Barbara and he calls me from the car he's like dude this song totally fucking sucks and I was like well I'll, you know, I, I can't disagree with you there <laughs> so yeah it has happened we, and I don't think we ever used any riff from that song There were so many, there were a lot of good riffs, it just, I don't know, it just kind of wasn't really, I think it was more in the structure than anything, but never ended up using any of those riffs from that song. It completely got thrown away. Um, talking about the music uh, on Trust No One, I have the feeling that, of course, each song has its own character and is unique for itself, but somehow every song on the album has, um, has the same vibe. I feel. Uh, is it um, is it a concept, or did you just roll it in one session, or what is behind that? Um, I did a lot more writing on this record than any other record, and that's probably where the vibe comes from. Because you know, me, John Miller. Originally, it was more John Miller and John Berklin as the main songwriters of the band. And then when I came in, they let me write a little bit and. As time went on, I wrote a little bit more, and it like by pray for villains, you know. Even um, Jeff wrote a whole song on that record too, I believe. And so, Devil Driver in the past has had a lot of different writers and a lot of different styles put into one. And you know, by Beast, it was more just me, Kendrick, and Berklin. And then by Winter Kills, it was mostly just me and Berklin. And then they decided to leave the band, and so now you have a... It was kind of me setting the pace for a lot of the songs, because the other guys were new, and they're definitely going to be writing more on the next records, because we had so much fun, and I think they have a lot of great ideas, but... Um, it was m most of the writing, you know, guitar-wise, was, I think I wrote like 60-70% of it. And uh, the one song, oh, I can't, but uh, Austin, maybe. Austin wrote, it's, uh, <laughs> I can't even remember the name of it right now, but the, uh, the working title was Pinner. But there's a song on the record that uh, sounds distinctly different, and it's because it was, it was written by Austin. Okay, I just have one final question, and that is, uh, what would your advice be for young bands or new bands? discourage people from becoming musicians and artists, but it, it's definitely getting a lot harder. Um, and it's gotten so hard in the music industry for new bands to make a living out of it. Um, I, honestly, it's kind of sad that I ran out of advice. 
Okay, did you feel that with, with Devil Driver as well? No, I feel and no, I feel very fortunate with Devil Driver. I mean, we're, we our heads are way above water, and it's been 14 years, and people are still coming to our shows, and I can't. I'm eternally grateful for that. And, and, you know, most days I wake up and I, I, I can't believe the life that I have. I mean, I'm, it's it's pretty awesome, but uh, just I mean, there's really. I was actually, I would say the best thing too is people that are in bands together that don't get along will probably kill a band quicker than anything. Um, and if you guys can't talk things through and find, I mean, if, if you're arguing even before you go out on tour, not like something has to happen. One of you's got to leave the band. And I would say figure out how you're going to structure things, like who's going to be the writer, who's going to do this, who's going to do that. and um, So when you get to the point when you do get a record deal and you have to, you know, divide up publishing and whatnot amongst members, you know, like who wrote what this, who wrote what, I mean, you know, it's, uh, you have to be able to accomplish that, which can be a very touchy subject and a very calm matter. So let's say find people that you can work with that you can get along with and you can have um, hard conversations with without getting angry. I think that is a, a big part of being a successful band. Okay, thanks a lot for this interview. No problem. <laughs>